Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here, coming to you from my office again at Aqualand, St. Charles, Illinois, the water garden capital of the world. <laughs> we have a really, really cool, unique project in front of us for this week's vlog. Working with Jamie from Aquarium Info, an incredible woman, super passionate, love following her content. She contacted us about doing an indoor pond type of a system, but it's kind of going to be like a hybrid system. So it's going to be a large aquarium, but it's going to look like a pond. So it's going to be made out of acrylic. It's going to be six feet long, 18 to maybe 24 inches tall. It's going to be home for her axolotls. Really, really cool. Let me start out with the facts on this incredible animal. I remember going back gosh, 35 plus years ago now when I was in zoology class at Eastern Illinois University, just talking about some of these unique creatures, they have the ability to regenerate some of their appendages. So if they lose a hand or an arm, they could actually regrow that. So as you can imagine, there's tons of research being done about that. So we can learn about that for human applications. So just how that actual process actually occurs is just mind blowing. But I don't wanna get into all that type of stuff right now. What I do want to talk about though is a little bit of their habitat and this unique species is only found in one lake outside of Mexico City. The original home, Lake Chalco, was drained to prevent flooding and things like that. So now they're kind of reduced to a series of canals and things like that. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly. Lake Sochimco maybe? <laughs> Lake Sochimco. Really, really cool place. I have never personally been there. I've read about it. I've heard about it. I would love to actually see it in person. We want to tie to recreate a really cool environment for these particular animals. So I'm gonna kind of take my interpretation of it and I'm obviously gonna be working with Jamie as well to create something very, very cool. I'm thinking kind of logs and stumps just because you know I love working with that type of stuff as well as mixing in some of the moss rocks and stuff like that. But I wanna also utilize some of the technology that we have from a filtration, kind of an ecosystem setup. Let me show you a little bit of a sketch that I've done here. It's gonna be approximately six feet long. Width is gonna be 24 up to 30 inches wide. I know she's kind of trying to finalize that because it's going inside of her studio where she does all of her work and all that stuff. So we don't we want to make sure that we don't take up too much space. The other th cool thing that we want to have with this is we're going to have some sort of vegetation or kind of a wall over in the back. So it's not going to be a true kind of a living wall, but it will have a wall of vegetation going up the, up the back. And I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. She is having some of this stuff made. So she's going to get a stand for the tank. She's getting the actual tank itself made. So what I want to do is I'm going to go here. We have a bunch of stumps in back that we got from different places around the country, from friends, property owners, and things like that that we have connections with. So I want to come in with some really cool pieces of driftwood and stuff like that. And the reason I want to do that is it's going to give us a lot of height, but it's not going to take up a lot of weight. So if I was doing this outdoors, I would definitely do it out of boulders and stuff like that. But indoors, I don't know what the load bearing capacity for her floor is. So we're gonna have this tank full of water. We're gonna have a stand. We're gonna be loading it up with rocks. We're gonna be building up high systems and stuff like that. So I am a little bit concerned about weight. Also, we don't have heavy equipment, so we're gonna have to physically lift these pieces up. So any rocks that I do wanna use inside, I'm gonna try to find stuff that is on the narrow side. So that stuff I could kinda stand up and it kinda creates almost like a veneer type of a look. What I like about doing that is it will give us the desired look, but it's not gonna take up a lot of space. Remember, we don't have a ton of room in this thing, so 24 to 30 inches maximum. So if I start putting in 18 inch boulders, that's gonna cut that thing more than in half and that's gonna get rid of a lot of the open area for the particular animal. So I wanna make sure that we have wide open spaces for the axolotls to kind of do their thing down in the bottom, crawl around. I wanna create nooks and crannies and caves and stuff like that, which actually mimics where they're normally found and where you would find them. So here's kind of some of my thoughts. Like I said, I know we have some of these really cool stumps over in the back. So I'll try to find some pieces like that. And we will be coming in with some, some boulders, accents and stuff like that. And we'll be putting in some other rocks and stuff to kind of fill in some of the cracks and crevices and voids. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create pockets for vegetation. And I kind of did a really rough job of just drawing in some of the types of the vegetation, just it's gonna be going up the back. But what I wanna do is kind of create a few different layers. So I will show you the side as well as the top view. So let's start over here with this side view. So here we, you can see we have that stand again. Here's the tank itself.
itself, it's just gonna go up against an existing wall. So that wall is up, obviously up against the back. And then I have this little hollow spot right in here. I'm gonna fill that space with one of our aqua blocks. This would allow us to actually get a little bit of height over on the back. And then I'm gonna take a rubber membrane and I'm gonna attach it to the wall, physically attach it to the wall. And I'm gonna drape it down over that aqua block and then into and behind the back of my stumps and logs and stuff like that. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me another nine and a half inches of area that I can plant. So instead of planting everything inside the actual tank, I'm actually gonna plant it on a shelf on the outside edge but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have water kind of dribbling through all that vegetation over in the back I'll think of it almost like a, a waterfall so when I do a waterfall I take my rubber liner and I drape it over the soil and it goes down into my pond system so what I want to do is I'm gonna attach that piece of liner to the wall it's gonna drape down and it's gonna cascade itself inside of the aquarium so this way when I start pumping some water in there to keep all that vegetation alive all the water is going to drain itself back into the tank itself and I think that's what really makes this unique I'm going to be discharging water right into this uh, this soil pockets and things like that where the plants are actually going to be living. So that will allow me to keep some unique plant varieties alive as well as kind of limit some of the maintenance. It's also gonna create kind of this really unique kind of a weeping wall effect, just like you would find in a very tropical location. And I think that's really the look that we're going for. Heavy, thick vegetation, mixture of aquatic plants as well as some ferns and philodendrons and things like that. That's really gonna fill the space. So I want to utilize some of that plant material inside of this system to create that tropical look. It's also going to act as part of the filtration. So anytime you start adding vegetation into a system, it's going to start growing. So it's going to grow off of a couple different things. Obviously a lighting system. We will have some lights inside. So through the process of photosynthesis, we're going to create carbohydrates and sugars by having that light come down and it's going to start to illuminate the green leaves themselves. That process is going to utilize carbon dioxide, it's going to utilize some water, it's also going to utilize dissolved nutrients that are in the water itself. So what we want to do is plant these, put these plants in with minimal amounts of soil. I'm going to use heavy amounts of river rock and small gravel and things like that. So as I dribble water through that, the plants are going to send their roots further out to absorb as much nutrition as possible. And the nutrition is going to come in the form of waste from the axolotls themselves. As the axolotls feed, their waste is going to go into the water column. We wanna detoxify that through the nitrification cycle. Through microbiological action, we're gonna break that stuff down. We will have a biological filter inside of this system, but we also wanna accentuate it with all that root system that's gonna go down into that gravel bed. And that's gonna absorb all those little micronutrients. It's gonna give us really, really good water quality. Again, this is biomimicry concepts because in nature, you're gonna see that all around us. All we have to do is open our eyes, look at this stuff, riverbanks and different riparian zones. You're gonna see all this vegetation that's growing and it's absorbing nutrition, the nutrients directly out of the water itself, as well as supplemented by the bedrock and all the other stuff that's growing in and around it. So it kind of creates this, this little microbiome all on itself, which is a really cool concept. And it's exactly what we wanna to try to do here. So if I'm looking at this from the side, so I have that aqua block right over here marked out. So that's going to give us that joint. I'm going to have my rubber liner draping in. And then over here, you can see I have that wooden stump kind of marked. I'm going to try to find stuff that I can cut or I could modify. So all I really want is kind of that front face of it. I will create some depth to it with those aqua blocks and some of that other stuff that we're gonna be doing. And that's the type of stuff that we will be working directly on site to pull off. In between, I'm, I said I'm gonna to try to pull some vegetation. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my rubber liner, I'm gonna kind of put it in behind that stump and I'm gonna have that fabric go all the way up that wall and then I will attach it directly to the wall along with the rubber liner. So now what I've done is I've created this little planting basket. And for certain plants, I will take some additional plant soil and I'll add it into that little pocket. But what I really wanna do is I wanna 
fill as much of that up with that river rock as possible because I want to have those plants absorb the nutrients directly from the water column itself. So once I have that plant pocket, now I could put in my vegetation in these areas and I could have all that stuff kind of cascading itself up and over those different logs. The other thing that I'm going to do is I will have sand down in here. And this is something that Jamie was asking about and that's because that's a better substrate for this particular species. We will be adding some of the larger river stone down into the bottom just from a decorative standpoint as well as kind of a structural type of a thing. But the main open areas we want to use a washed sand which is really going to create kind of a nice environment for the animal but it's also going to create another planting medium for us for putting in some anubias and some other hair grasses and stuff like that which would grow very very well inside of that type of a substrate. So if I'm looking at this from the top you can see I'm going to have my bio filter right over here. I'm going to have more aqua blocks over here in this corner and then I'll put my pump directly inside of one of those aqua blocks. The reason I want to do that is I don't want the axolotl to get into the pump volute or any type of the mechanics. So when this pump is operational, it's going to take water around the back of this system over here into our biological filter. And I'm also going to have multiple discharge points to create that weeping wall effect that we were just discussing as well as kind of watering all the different types of plants inside. So our biological filter is critical. This is an upflow biological filter. We're going to use our mini biofalls. So we're going to pump water into the bottom. We have that sedimentation chamber on the bottom. The water is going to overflow out, which is going to create that circulation we're looking for. So the water is going to kind of cascade itself out. And I'm going to have all of this water flowing back into my pump system. I will have a pre-filter located or attached directly to the aqua block. So that means all the water has to pass through that pre-filter which is gonna help this with the overall water quality. Then I'm going to create these different pockets over here in the background that we were talking about in and around all of those stumps and rocks and things. So again, this is gonna be a work in progress. The challenge that we have is this might be a huge aquarium, but to me, this is a very small aquatic ecosystem. I'm used to working on things that are a thousand feet long. I'm talking about massive pond systems and streams and waterfalls and cascades, all types of incredible things, literally mimicking nature. This one, I have to pull that off in a smaller space. And I think that's really gonna be the challenge for this particular project. I am totally looking forward to working with Jamie, seeing exactly what she's created. She's having that stand built. She's picking up the tank. We will modify everything once we get on site. I'm going to go out with Trevor and I'm going to pick out some of the natural stone. We're going to go to the local stone yard. We're also going to go on back over here to try to find some of those incredible stumps that we have so we can create a true one-of-a-kind unique work of art. Stay tuned. This is going to be one incredible project. <music>